Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. I'm Mike. This time we're taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Storm Shadow from Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. Now if you haven't already, please follow, like, and subscribe to my social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get a notification of when I post new content. Who's excited for Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins? Really awesome movie. Um, I have to say I have completely changed my opinion about it because I'm going to tell you guys uh, I opposed this film from day one. <laughs> I was not on board with this movie. Um, but you know the more that I've analyzed it and the scenes and things in it I came to realize hey this this really is a good movie. You know, um, And one of the things you have to do sometimes is um, you have to turn off the critics. You know, you can't listen to what they have to say. And, you know, if this film is really a uh, origin story for Snake Eyes and how he becomes a member of G.I. Joe, it's also, in many ways, an origin story for Storm Shadow uh, and how he falls uh, from a place of uh, great honor and great respect and makes the decision to walk down the wrong path. Now, I know for many of you, like myself, you're lifelong fans of G.I. Joe. Just like me, you grew up with it in the 80s with your original comics and cartoons, your original toys. Uh, you know, I grew up playing G.I. Joe outside, you know, by myself. Uh, people called me G.I. Joe. Uh, people still call me G.I. Joe. <laughs> so, you know, it's really fascinating to see an origin story between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow because that, that's the ultimate standoff right there, you know. Um, I really like what they did in Rise of Cobra and Retaliation with these two characters. And honestly, I was hoping this was going to be a continuation of that. I, I was hoping we were going to see Ray Park and, and Lee byung Hun, you know, brought back, you know, uh, maybe use some uh, CGI de-aging if that's necessary or whatever. But I really wanted to see those two characters in this role. But nonetheless... Um, I think that both Henry Golding and Andrew Koji put their heart into this film and made it what it is. So if you guys don't know anything about this character uh, named Storm Shadow, and, and his original uh, first appearance was actually G.I. Joe issue number one. Uh, his real name, Tommy Arashikagi, was born in San Francisco in California, uh, and he was a member of the 101st Air Assault Division out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and he served alongside the two guys who would become Stalker and Snake Eyes. They were deployed to Vietnam, and all three of them volunteered for and were selected for a LERP team. Now, if you don't know what LERPs are, that's an acronym, L-R-R-P. It stands for Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol, and uh, all three of these guys are on a mission. They come under enemy contact, and the helicopter... Uh, behind him, a UH-1 Huey, uh, takes enemy fire and it explodes. And the the explosion from the burning uh, jet fuel in the helicopter severely burns and disfigures Snake Eye's face and it burns his vocal cords. So, uh, you know, he's rotated back to the United States where he learns that his family has been killed in a car accident. And, you know, Snake Eyes has nothing to live for. You know, he, he has no one, no home, nothing. So, he just goes off into the mountains in seclusion to process everything that's happened. And it's Tommy who comes to him and offers him a chance at a new life. You know, he offers to take Snake Eyes with him back to Japan to train with his family, the Arashikagi clan, uh, in the art of ninjutsu. And that's what he does. And there's a complete story there. I'm not going to go in, into any more details, but there's a lot of things there that you can take away uh, from his origin story. And, you know, Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins is a modern take on that. You know, they, they stay true to the, the heart of the original characters, but they rewrote it, you know, in many ways. And uh, nonetheless, you know, it's a great movie, great character, and of course we have great action figures from that film. And Storm Shadow is one of them. Uh, I have to say I like his concept art uh, to a certain degree better than this uh, this uniform. And coincidentally, Hasbro chose the concept art to make the uh, basic six-inch six action figure and went with the uh, movie version for the Classified series, which is cool. And you can see the packaging. Uh, all the movie version Classified series boxes have that darker black color to them. 
Really cool artwork in the lower right hand corner. Of course, the uh, movie uh, logo on the lower left. And if you take a look at the insert in the back with your Rashikagi logo on it, uh, Storm Shadow's insert is black and Snake Eyes' insert is white. And that's to uh, contrast the color uh, of the action figure. The other thing you'll notice on the right hand side there, there is the attachment that goes on his back uh, for his swords. And coincidentally, this isn't a full sheath. Uh, you know, it, it's just for the swords to fit into. And, uh, you know, I may do something with that later. You know, I may make some sheaths for the swords to fit into that because I, I just don't like the look of the swords uh, bare on his back. You know, they're razor sharp, and it would be way too easy for him to, to injure himself. Uh, the other thing is the, the head sculpt uh, for Tommy Rashikage, identical to Andrew Koji. Really cool. I, I like that. And I want to quickly point out the two swords that he has. Both of these swords are katana. Katana was the traditional sword used by samurai. They were, you know, usually between 36 and 38 inches in length. Uh... And, you know, the samurai were the protectors of the shogun, the warlords, the government in Japan. Uh, they were their bodyguards, and they also enforced local laws, you know, in the different uh, uh, villages and things like that in, in each uh, prefecture. So it, it's kind of strange to see a ninja with a samurai sword because that's not what their traditional weapon was. The katana used by the samurai took months to forge, and it was forged out of the purest metals. They were forged out of carbon steel. You know, the, the furnaces were handmade for each blade, uh, you know, and the bladesmiths would have to stay awake for days on end, making sure that the temperature was just right to temper uh, the steel and the carbon together to form the blade. And then they would go through the process after smelting of, of actually beating the blade and out and you know this metal was folded many many times over and continuously repeated in a process until it was perfect literally and you know the samurai uh carried their katana everywhere they were not allowed to leave their sword or to lose it that was you know dishonorable and they lived by code uh of honor called bushido and you know they they abided by that code even in combat you know everything they did was built and designed around honor. The ninja, on the other hand, were completely opposite, and many ninja were former samurai. Their sword, the ninjato, was much, much shorter, 26 to 28 inches in length. It had a straight blade, and unlike the katana, it was not made from the purest metals they could find. It was made from much more crude material, uh, often quickly hammered out, and uh, they were disguised often as, you know, uh, just a stick that you might have in a, a bundle of firewood. Uh, they had uh, no hand guard. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, the ninjato uh, would be snuck in many times into a target where a ninja was working to assassinate someone. You know, uh, a katana was used uh, in many different forms for slashing, for cutting, and things like that whereas an anjato was used more frequently for jabs and for stabbing and things along that line. So I wanted to share that with you, you know, to provide some context to the type of swords that you see with Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, uh, because these are not the traditional swords that you would see a ninja use. You know, perhaps if they killed a samurai, they would take their sword, uh, but traditional uh, ninja would not carry a katana. They would carry an anjato. Um, and another reason that their swords were, were condensed and were shorter, you know, for them to be able to uh, climb over walls and maneuver, you know, through the woods and things like that. They weren't curved. You know, they carried them on their back versus on their side uh, many times so that they wouldn't get caught up in brush or make noise. So that's the front of the packaging. The side of the packaging, you can see the artwork of uh, Storm Shadow. That's really cool. And the box is cut. I pre-ordered, uh, I got these from GameStop, and when they arrived, they were cut open. Uh, looks like with a box cutter, but they're supposed to replace that. And there's the artwork on the back of Snake Eyes. And then you have uh, the different uh, emblems that are coincide with their strengths and abilities and things like that that you can find on the uh, G.I. Joe website.
And here we have Storm Shadow outside of the packaging. And you guys can see this is a really nicely done action figure. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, detailing and sculpting in this figure. And like all the classified series, uh, has a tremendous amount of articulation. So let's bring him up close so you guys can take a look at this. Nice head sculpt. I like the shoulder armor. Armor on his forearms. Really cool. All the way around. And you can see the partial scabbard for the katana. I wish that had been a, a traditional scabbard. And I, I may make something later on for that. But still really nice. And full range of motion. You know, his head's on on a ball joint. Forward and lateral movement there at the shoulder. Butterfly joint. Bicep rotation. Double jointed elbow. Uh, wrist swivel and pivot. Torsos on it. Uh, hinge there. Waist swivel. Forward and lateral movement at the uh, thigh, thigh rotation. Double jointed knee. Nice tight joints on, on all of these figures. And like Snake Eyes, he does not have lower leg uh, rotation. His foot will pivot. It's also on a ball joint. So, again, really, really nicely done figure. See if I can get him to stand on this foam board. There we go. Now, he is... As far as height, Storm Shadow is six and a quarter inches tall. It's a little bit taller than Snake Eyes. And almost 16 centimeters. And for comparison, there he is with Snake Eyes. That's really cool. You know, you could put these two figures together in so many uh, dioramas and, and different poses for toy photography. They are really, really nicely done. And, of course, you can switch out the head sculpt. put that head sculpt on him. You guys can see that up close. Really nice. And his swords, of course, will fit in each hand. You can hear the joints popping. They're tight uh, from the factory. So guys, there you have the G.I. Joe Classified Series Storm Shadow from Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins.